Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be looking at advancements in Minecraft and how to define custom advancements through data packs. As you can see here, we've got our advancements that are in the vanilla game. And believe it or not, all of these are actually defined in the base game's data pack. These are not hard coded into Minecraft and anybody can add them to their own data packs if they so choose. You can see over here, I've created my own little advancement tab where you can gather dirt, gather grass, and you can craft a crafting table using a crafter while on a bamboo raft. There's a lot of complicated stuff you can get into using this system. There are so many possibilities because this system is really fleshed out. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's start off inside VS Code, inside this data pack folder, which I just created using the data pack create command. As you can see, we've got our pack.mcmeta and we've got our data folder right here. In our data folder, let's go ahead and create our namespace folder. That's gonna be ADV. That's gonna be the namespace of our data pack. And inside of there, we'll say advancement. This is where we'll store all our advancements. So we'll go ahead and create our first advancement file. This is gonna be called diamond pickaxe. JSON. And what we're going to do is we're going to give this advancement to the player whenever they craft a diamond pickaxe. So let's create our object here. And the first thing we need is called criteria. This is where you can define different criteria that are required for your advancement. So one of these requirements could be get diamond pickaxe. And in here, this is where we actually define the criteria that we need with the trigger. So we set trigger equal to Minecraft. For this one, we'll say inventory change because anytime the inventory is changed, we wanna check for this advancement. Now we don't want to trigger this advancement anytime the inventory is changed. That's why we get conditions down here. And in conditions, we can have a few different options. We get items, players, and slots. Let's go ahead and do items because we're going to define a condition that determines whether or not the item in question is a diamond pickaxe. And all we have to do in here is we have to say items, Minecraft, diamond, pickaxe. And there we go. So let's review. We've got our criteria. This criterion is called get diamond pickaxe. And it has a trigger of inventory change. So whenever the inventory is changed, this will trigger only if the condition is passed and the condition we have defined is an item condition and we've got a list of them here we can define as many as we want but we've just defined one with the items set to minecraft diamond pickaxe so only if the inventory changed and there's a diamond pickaxe in the inventory will this advancement be given however this is not the only thing we need to do we actually need to define what requirements are required to give the advancement. So we've got this criterion here and we want to set requirements. Requirements is an array of arrays. And so inside of these arrays, the simplest way to do this is have inside the first array, get diamond pickaxe, for example. Now, if you do define multiple criteria on your advancement, you have the ability to combine those criteria in a custom way using and and or a logic within the requirements field. We'll take a look at that a little bit later in the video. The final thing we need to get our advancement to show up is the display property. Inside of display, there's a few different required fields. First of all is title. We'll name this get diamond pickaxe. And we need a description. This will say obtain a diamond pickaxe. And then we need to set our icon. The game will use an existing item as our icon. We don't need to define a custom texture for this. All we need to do is say ID Minecraft diamond pickaxe. And that will just show the diamond pickaxe as the icon of the advancement. And now this is the bare bones, all we need to just have a simple advancement that triggers when we get a diamond pickaxe in our inventory. So now let's go ahead and go into Minecraft. We can type slash reload. And now what we need to do is get ourselves a diamond pickaxe. So if we go and cheat it in real quick, as you can see, our new advancement triggers. It says get diamond pickaxe. And when you hover over it, obtain a diamond pickaxe. And also, if you go into the advancements tab, you can see our new advancement has its own tab called get diamond pickaxe. 
and we'll address this background issue a little bit later. As you can see, get diamond pickaxe. Now let's go ahead and find out what's going on with this purple and black background. If we go back into our code, we need a new field in display called background. Now this one does actually reference a direct texture. So we can just say block slash diamond or, and this is all we need to do to replace this background in the game. So let's reload and back in here. We set this background to be diamond or, so it's going to tile this background all the way across. Next, we're going to create a new advancement. And this one is going to be called open crafting table.json. And it's going to do exactly what it sounds like. Whenever you open the crafting table, this advancement will be granted. So let's type a criteria just like before. We're going to name this open table. This can be whatever you want as long as it matches what you have down in the requirements field below. So we say open table trigger. And this time we're going to use Minecraft any block use. This is going to trigger anytime we use a block. And of course, we want to add our conditions here to make sure that we only trigger this for the crafting table. We've got location and player for our condition options. Let's go ahead and set location. This is going to be a list of more conditions just like before. And this time we'll set condition to be Minecraft block state property. And this is going to allow us to check what block the user interacted with. And using this, we can have our additional fields. One is going to be block and we'll set block to Minecraft crafting thing table. Our criteria now should be good. So let's set our requirements to be an array of array open table. Now, what if we wanted to trigger this advancement only if the user has opened both types of crafting tables in the game? That is the regular crafting table and the crafter block. So I'm going to create a new criterion called open crafter. This will again have a trigger of Minecraft any block use with conditions. The location will be just like before, except we'll say block Minecraft crafter. And now that we've got two criteria here, we've got open table and open crafter, we can define whether we want to require both of these or whether we want to require just one. If we want to require both of these, we need to create two sub lists right here. So we'll create another sub list. And in that one, we'll say open crafter. Now, if we wanted to require just one of them, we would instead put them both in the same sub list right here. So the way you can think about it is that each sub list in this outer array represents an and. So every single one of these sub lists has to be satisfied. But within each sub list, only one of the criteria have to be satisfied. So open table or open crafter. And then if we had more in here, it would be any one of those. And if we have more in here, it would be any one of those. But all three of these sub lists would have to be satisfied in some way. So let's go ahead and make this an and again. And now we've got an advancement open crafting table that requires you to open a crafting table and open a crafter. Finally, we need to add our display and we'll go ahead and give it a title, a description, as well as an icon. And finally, our background will be our crafter texture. Back in Minecraft, we'll reload and we'll get ourselves a crafting table and a crafter. We'll place them both down. If we open up one, we do not get the advancement, but as soon as we open up the other, we get open all crafters advancement. This is pretty nice. It says use both a crafting table and a crafter. If we open up the advancements tab, we've got our diamond pickaxe one here, but we've also got our open all crafters section here as well. And we've got even our texture that we defined for the background. Now you may be wondering why we have separate tabs for these two advancements. Why aren't they in the same tab just like the Minecraft advancements are? Well, that's because we haven't defined a parent for either one of these. So let's go back into our code and inside of maybe the diamond pickaxe at the top, we'll say parent. And this is where we define the ID of our other advancement that we want to use as the parent. So we'll say ADV open crafting table as the parent. And now that this has a parent, we do not need to define its own background texture. So we can delete that. And now back in Minecraft, we'll reload and look in our advancements. As you can see, we've got open all crafters, which was the parent and then get diamond pickaxe, 
So we set the parent of get diamond pickaxe to be open all crafters. Open all crafters is also the title of this tab right here and the icon for this tab. So you do have to have the same icon for the first item in the advancements tab as the advancements tab itself. And now that you've got to this point in the video, if you're enjoying it so far, please drop a like and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any new content just like this in the future. All right, now that we have a basic understanding of how advancements work, let's go ahead and add one that's a little bit more complex. For this one, I want to make it so that we have to shear a pink sheep. Pink sheep are pretty rare in Minecraft, and so to shear one, then would be a pretty decent advancement in Minecraft. So let's go ahead and hop into VS Code. So in VS Code, let's go ahead and create a new advancement file called here pink sheep dot JSON. And in here, we'll go ahead and set a criteria of sheer pink sheep. And we'll set the trigger to be player interacted with entity. So anytime the player interacts with an entity, this will trigger and we want to make sure that the player has shears in their hand and the entity they interacted with was in fact a pink sheep. So we'll say conditions. We've got a few conditions to define right here, but first we'll say entity and we can say type Minecraft sheep, but just a sheep isn't enough. We need to make sure it's a pink sheep. For that, we can use the components property right here. Components set this to sheep slash color make sure it's pink and so there we go we've got a condition that will make sure we interacted with a pink sheep now we also want to make sure that the item we were holding is going to be shears and so we want to set this items field right here to be minecraft shears and there we go we've got our criteria all defined and we'll set our requirements our display and we'll set pink wool as its icon. Finally, we'll give it a parent of ADV open crafting table, just like our other advancements. So we've got sheer pink sheep and diamond pickaxe, which are both children advancements of the open crafting table advancement. So that's why since we've got this parent, we do not need to define a background in our display section. And as you'll see in just a second, it will display as a sub child of the open crafting table advancement. Back in the game, we'll slash reload. And if we find ourselves a sheep spawn egg and we get some pink dye in order to dye it pink, then we get some shears and we shear our sheep. You can see shear pink sheep, find a pink sheep and shear it. Again, if we were to slash advancement, revoke everything. So then we don't have that advancement anymore and we try it on just a regular sheep, nothing happens. It only happens if we have a pink sheep. Finally, let's take a look inside our advancements tab and we can see that it shows both of these as children of the open all crafters advancement. Now I wanna go over a couple more properties of advancements that will help you customize these even further. So first of all, we have inside our display section, announce to chat. This is a Boolean true or false value. It's pretty simple. If it's true, which it is by default, it will announce this advancement to the chat whenever the player achieves it. If it's false, it will stay quiet. And likewise, we've got show toast, which will control whether the toast is shown in the top right corner of the game whenever the player achieves this advancement. And again, this is by default true, but we can set it to false. And finally, we have the frame option which controls what the frame looks like. We've got three options, challenge, goal, or task. By default, it is a task, which is a normal square border on the advancement. But if we set this to goal, it will give us a rounded border and challenge will give us a fancy spiked border. So for example, our sheer pink sheep, let's go ahead and set that to a challenge. And for our open crafting table, we'll go ahead and set this to a goal. If we open back up Minecraft and reload, we can see we've got three different types. We've got a rounded border on the open all crafters. We've got a square border on get diamond pickaxe, just like default. And we've got this spiked border on the sheer pink sheep. This also controls the color for this spiked border of the advancement description text. It turns into this pink purple color down at the bottom that you can see right there. Now, the final thing we'll go over in this video is the reward system for advancements. Inside of advancements, you can actually define a reward that will be given to the player when they complete the advancement. 
If we set rewards, we'll get a object here and we can set it to experience, function, loot, or recipes. Now experience is quite simple. It'll give the player experience whenever they complete the advancement. It'll just add this amount of experience to their experience bar. Function is also quite simple. It just runs a Minecraft function that you have defined in your data pack as well. We don't have any in this data pack, but if you had some, then it would run that function. You've got loot, which will give you loot from a Minecraft loot table. It can be a Minecraft loot table or a loot table you define yourself. Let me know down in the comments if you want me to create a video about how to define your own custom loot tables in the future. But we can say maybe archeology span slash trail ruins rare, and this will give us a trail ruins rare drop when we shear pink sheep. And the final one is recipes. And this is used in vanilla when the player gets certain items to unlock recipes. Minecraft actually uses advancements, hidden advancements, to show recipes in the recipe book. So this recipes will go ahead and grant the recipes. So for example, we can grant the recipe for an arrow whenever the user achieves this shear pink sheep. And so we'll get 100 experience, we'll get the trail ruins rare loot table and we'll get an arrow recipe when we shear a pink sheep so let's go into minecraft slash reload and let's go ahead and clear out our inventory except for the things we'll need so that we can see what items we get we'll spawn our pink sheep and this time we'll go in survival mode so we can see our levels slash xp set colabot zero and i've just cleared out my experience bar so that there's no experience there we can see exactly how much experience i get and now let's shear our pink sheep for the first time as you can see we got seven levels and we got this wayfinder armor trim and if you looked in that corner you saw this little thing go up in the corner which showed the arrow recipe being granted to us and if we give ourselves a crafting table right here we can also see that we have the arrow recipe in our crafting grid as well. Anyways, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And if you leave a like and subscribe, you won't miss any of the new videos that I release. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.